Lazarus, come out of that tomb. We all need to come out of the tombs that we find ourselves in. Whether they're tombs that others have put us in or tombs that we put ourselves in. First of all, I want to begin by emphasizing I'm not referring to the present situation we are in due to the coronavirus. In fact, we can't let the coronavirus put us in a tomb. Yes, we might be self-quarantined. Perhaps we're told by the government to shelter in place. But our homes are not tombs. Our homes are little churches. True, we've all had to make radical changes to our, to our lifestyles. But those changes have nothing to do with the foundation of our lives, have nothing to do with who we are. We are followers of Jesus Christ. We're called to love God with our whole heart, our whole mind, our whole soul, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. That's who we are. So we stay in shelter, or we keep social distancing, all out of love for others. We may not be sick, but we don't want to take the chance of getting anyone else sick. Nor do we want to bring the sickness into our homes and infect those whom we love. From our homes, we can reach out to others, though. We can call those who are vulnerable. All of us should have those people that we're calling every day to let them know that we care about them and we're checking in on them. We can, we can add the grocery list for that elderly lady next door, the elderly couple. Add her grocery list to our grocery list. We may have more time on our hands for, for spiritual reading. Maybe we can finally say, I've always said I'm going to read the Gospel of John from beginning to end. Now we've got the time to do it. Or we can follow some, some courses or movies on Formed. We can find other ways to come closer to the Lord. Our homes are not tombs. They're little churches. And the coronavirus cannot change that. But there are real tombs from which the Lord calls us. There are tombs that we're in due to our very existence as human beings. What the ancient scribes wrote in the book of Genesis, presented in the third chapter, the fall of man, was that mankind would rather push God aside and lose himself in the material world than listen to God and keep him in the center of his life. Mankind turned from the Lord of life. Turning from life means turning to death. This was not God's plan for us. He didn't want us to die. He didn't want our bodies to decay in tombs. He wanted us to have a full share in his life. I ask you, think about the assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. That feast, you know, we celebrate on August 15th. Think about that feast. Mary was created without sin so she could be the mother of God. And she agreed to allow God's plan to work in her at the, uh, in the Annunciation, the feast we celebrated on, on Wednesday. When Mary's life came to her end, to an end, her body was not put into a tomb to decay or into a grave to decay. Instead, she was united body and soul to God. And that's what God wanted for all of us. He sent his son, the word, Jesus the Christ, to restore our, restore our spiritual lives. And it's from the cross, it's from the cross that Jesus calls us out of the tombs. Many people are in tombs due to no choice of their own. They may have a serious medical condition, something that may greatly limit what they can do. Maybe they have cancer or heart conditions or emphysema or kidney problems. Or maybe they're suffering from pneumonia caused by the, the flu or the coronavirus. 
Jesus is calling them, calling us all, out of the tombs that sickness puts us in. Jesus doesn't want people to be sick. He healed people during his earthly ministry, and he, he, and he continues to heal people, and he heals us. He calls us out of the tomb of sickness to be united to him. As a priest, and, and many priests can tell you this, I guess all priests can tell you this, I brought sacraments to people in the very last moments of their lives. And many have said to me, I'm going to be all right, Father. I might die, but I'm going to be all right. The voice of the Lord calls us outside of our sick rooms, calls us to know that if we walk with him, we will have life. No sickness can take the life of the Lord away from us. Some people are in tombs of their own making. They've experienced, they experimented with substance abuse and became dependent upon drugs or maybe alcohol. Or they've given in to porn to such an extent that they've been thoroughly addicted and they see their lives around them dissolve. They may fear that there is no hope. But if the addicted listen, if they listen, they can hear the voice of the Lord calling to them, saying to them, come out of that tomb. And with the Lord, they can walk once more into the light. Another tomb that many people find themselves in is the tomb that they construct with anger. Do you like the, the comics? I love the comics. I read, I read the comics every day. And one of my favorite is A Rose is a Rose. Rose is a young mother in her late 20s, early 30s. She's married to Jimbo, a blue-collar rock worker, blue-collar worker. They've got a little boy, Pasquale. Well, in a particular panel, it hits it right on the, on the noggin, a particular strip. In the first panel, we see Rose. She's in a cell. She's hunched over. She's got this huge frown on her face. And there's darkness and goblins and all sorts of things around her. And the second panel, Rose gets up and she walks out of the cell. In the third panel, she's in her living room and Jimbo's there sitting on the sofa watching TV. And she says, Jimbo, I've decided to forgive you. In the fourth panel, she's dancing. So many of us, so many of us are in tombs along with Rose in that first panel. We're angry because someone has offended us. They've done us dirty, and we hold grudges. By the way, you do know what a grudge is, right? A grudge is poison that we take, hoping that somebody else will suffer. One lady once said to me, I don't care what you say, Father. I'm going to take this grudge to the grave. And to that I responded, well, that'll fix them. Look. Jesus calls us out of the tomb of anger. And you know how he does this? He calls us out of the tomb of anger by telling us to forgive. He told us to pray, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. When we forgive, we leave the tomb of anger. When Jesus came to the tomb where this, his dear friend had been laid, he wept. You know, that's the shortest verse in all Scripture. He wept. Actually, the chapters and the verses in Scripture were done in the early Middle Ages by the scribes, the monks, various monasteries. Well, some monk who studied this 11th chapter of John was a genius. And he stopped and he made this, those two words, one verse itself. 
Jesus wept. He wept at what death did to that man he loved. He weeps at what death is doing to us. He doesn't want us in tombs. Whether there are tombs others put us in or tombs we create for ourselves. He calls us out of tombs. He calls us into the beauty of his world. But we have to take the step. We've got to decide to leave that which is destroying us and walk out into the tomb. And this walk might be difficult. We may have to walk despite the burial cloths tied around us. Unbind him, Jesus said to those standing with him after Lazarus stumbled out of the tomb. Unbind him, the Lord says to the Christian community, whenever anyone takes those first uncertain steps into the light. Unbind him, the Lord says to all around us. We recognize our frailty, and we allow others to care for us as we're called to care for them. Lazarus, come out. Come out. You and I do not belong in cold, dark tombs. We belong in the light. We belong dancing in the flowers with the Lord of life. In two weeks, we'll be celebrating Easter. We may be doing this in our church, or we may be celebrating Easter in the little church, which is our homes. Wherever we are celebrating, we will be celebrating because the one who is the Lord of life has called us to come out into the fullness of his life. God bless you now.